Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, we will talk about how to create database in SQL. So the agenda of the today's video tutorial is how to create database in SQL. So a database is a collection of objects, those can store the data and a database can be used to store and manage the data. If we look from the physical aspects of a database, then normally a database will have two types of files on the disk. So the first type of file that a database can have is the .mdf file which is also called as a data file and the primary data file okay so all the data from a database it will be stored inside a mdf file and the second type of file for a database will be ldf file and .ldf file can contain the information about different transactions performed on the database optionally we can have a third type of file as well which is called as .ndf file suppose in the disk where your primary file is placed you don't have the enough space to store more data then what you can do you can create a .ndf file which is also called a secondary data file then what will happen that the extra data will be stored inside the ndf file on another disk so .mdf, .ndf and .ldf they are the physical aspects of a database while the tables, views, store procedures and functions they are the logical aspects of a database and they are the sub parts of a database the database engine manages both system and user defined databases. When you install the SQL server, then system databases are automatically created while the user databases needs to be created by user explicitly. There are two ways to create a database. Either you can create the databases using GUI or you can create the databases using the SQL query. So let's see how we can create a database on the SQL server. So I have the SQL server 2019 instance and I already have a lot of databases created on my instance so let me show you the databases and I need to create a new database here so first I will show you how you can create the database using a GUI so if you want to create a database using the GUI method graphical user interface method then you can right click on the databases and click new database and then maybe you can maximize this one and then what you need to do inside the database name you need to provide the name of your database so suppose I want to create a new database with name maybe testing so I can provide the value testing here okay so if you see here the logical name so this is the logical name for the MDF file and this is the logical name for the LDF file and a file testing.mdf will be created at this particular location and it file testing underscore log dot ldf will be created at this particular location okay now if you see here it is rows data and this is log so it means that this is a mdf file and this will be the log file and now if you see the initial size this is 8 mb for the mdf file and this is the same size 8 mb for the ldf file as well and the auto growth for the file will be 64 mb so every time when it will occupy the 8 mb of space it will increase the space by 64 MB and this will go until unlimited okay so the database will grow unlimited okay and now the similar will be the case for the LDF file as well that the size of the LDF file will be increased by 64 MB if you click on this one so we have option either we can if you want to increase the size of the database maybe some another MB like maybe 100 MB or 200 MB then you can provide the value here or if you want to increase the size of the transaction log by percentage so maybe you can select like file growth in percentage and then you can provide a percentage value here for example the default value is 10 percent so now what will happen that when the size of the ldf file will reach to 8 mb then it will increase the size of the ldf file by 10 percent okay so it will be i think 0.8 percent okay so that's how it will go and you can maximize the size for example that you can maximize that it can be up to maybe several GB or you can leave it as unlimited as well so I will leave it as unlimited and it will increase by 10% so I can click on ok so this setting has changed here and for example if you want to make growth of the MDF file by 100 MB then you can provide a value 100 here so every time when the size of this particular file will increase up to a particular limit then it will increase the value by 100 MB and now if I scroll to the right so this is the path of the MDF file and LDF file so the database files will be created at this particular location 
so normally what happens that in the companies that in the c drive we have the limited space and normally the it person want that we should store the our mdf and ldf file the data file of the database and the transaction log file for the database on some another drives like maybe in the m drive or l drive or whatever drives you have on your servers you should store the files on some different drive you should not store on the drive where the operating system is installed so that's why we prefer to keep the databases on some another drive so you have the option to create this particular database on another drive so suppose i want to create the the ldf file in a d drive so i can select this one like maybe sql backups or it's up to us like where you want to store so for example i can store it at this location sql backups and i can click on okay similarly i can change the location of the ldf file as well so i will select the same location for the ldf file as well so now the database will be created at this particular location now i can go to the options here and if you see the collation here so the it is the default collation so the collation in sql server is a predefined set of rules that determine how the character data will be stored accessed and compared so at the moment the collation of the database is set to default so whatever will be the collation of the sql server the same collation will be applied to this particular database as well so if you have two different databases with different collation and if you will try to compare the tables between different databases that have the different collation then you can encounter some issues so i will talk about the collation in the detail in the upcoming videos but for now i think that's fine and now we have the option as for the recovery model as well so there are three recovery model and the default one it is set as full and we can also set the simple as well if you want so a recovery model is a database property that actually controls how the transactions are logged so simple recovery model does the minimum logging while in full recovery model it keeps all the data in the transaction log until you take a backup of the transaction log or you truncate the transaction log so i will keep that recovery model as simple here and then we have the compatibility level as well so by default it is set to sql server 2019 because this is the sql server 2019 instance but you can also set it to some other server as well but i will leave it as it is for now so i can click okay and it should create a database testing here on the sql server 2019 instance so if you see the table so as of now the table should be empty because i just created this particular database so this was like how you can create the database using the gui and now let me just draw this particular database so i can right click and select delete and now i can click on okay so the database will be deleted now another method to create the database is using the sql so i can click new query and a new query window will be opened and here i can create a new database so i can write a simple query create database and i can provide a name here so for example i can give the value as testing and if i click on execute then a new database should be created so i can refresh the databases and i can see a testing database here so this is working fine i can expand the tables yeah so the database has been created now if i go to the properties of the this particular database then you can see the different settings that if i go to the files so you can see that the auto growth size is 64 mb and 64 mb is for the mdf and 64 mb is for the ldf and if i go to the options here then you can see the recovery model is full okay so what happens when you create a database using a sql query then whatever the settings are set for the model database the new database settings will be the same as well for example the recovery model for the model database will be set to full that's why we have the recovery model of the newly created database as full and you can also explicitly set it to some other one as well while creating the database and that i will show you in a bit but the thing is that whatever will be the properties of the model database the new database properties will also will be the same here all the properties are inherited from the model database properties so for example the recovery model property of this particular database is set to full because the recovery model property of the model database is also set to full okay if you want to see that you can expand the system databases and you can go to the properties of the model database and here if you go to the options you can see the property here like recovery model is set to full and the compatibility level is set to sql server 2019 now suppose if i change the recovery model to simple and compatibility level to maybe 2017 
and if I click OK, now I have changed the uh, recovery model and I have changed the compatibility level. Okay. Now let me do one thing that let me delete this particular database and uh, yeah, let me delete the testing database from here. Click OK. So the database has been deleted. Now let me re execute this particular query and a new database should be created. So if I refresh the databases, then I should see a new database testing here. And if I go to the properties of this particular database and if I go to the options, so now you will see that the recovery model should be simple and the yeah, recovery model is simple and the compatibility level is set to SQL Server 2017. So this is because I have changed the properties of the model database. So all the settings are inherited for this newly created database as well. So this is one of the thing that I want to show you. Now another thing is when actually you create a database from the GUI so you can generate the SQL query as well and that SQL query you can maybe store it inside the SSIS package or maybe you can store it inside a store procedure and then you can create the database dynamically from the SQL query okay and you can provide all the settings like auto growth size, compatibility level, recovery model you can set them using the SQL query as well you can create the database using a SQL query and you can set all the properties as well. So let me show you how you can do that. So if I delete this database again and now let me right click on the databases, click new database and I can provide a value here like uh, maybe testing and then I can maybe change some other things as well like default path is this one. So maybe if I want to change the default path for the MDF file to this one. So I change the default path for the MDF file and now if I go to the options here Okay, so maybe uh, the recovery model I can set to full and the compatibility level maybe I can set to 16 here. Okay, so these are the things that I changed. Now if I will click on OK, so it will create a new database but instead of clicking OK, what I will do, I will click on the script. So what it will do, it will generate a script for these settings and now I can click on cancel. So it has generated a SQL query here. Okay, so this is the name of the database and this is the logical name of the data file and this is the logical name for the log file and now this is the path so if you want to create a database and this is the initial size file growth so all the settings are set here okay and this is the like compatibility level so if you want to change anything or if you want to leave them as it is what you can do with this particular query that you can save this particular query inside a store procedure or maybe an SSIS package and then you can create the database dynamically maybe with another name okay and maybe you can append the current date time stamp like maybe you can append the current date here 2022 11-13 so this value you know it can be get from like from the get date function okay so if you click on execute so the database will be created so these are the two options to create a database either using a GUI and either using a SQL query so if you will use a simple query like create database testing so it will create the database using the default settings whatever settings you have set for the model database and if you want to set some other settings as well then you can use a query similar to this particular query and you can set the settings explicitly as well while creating the database yeah so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much